my name is Mark Demaz, one of the pastors here on behalf of our entire staff and, and, and leadership here. We want to thank each and every one of you for choosing to make Mosaic your home this morning, especially those of you who are here for the first time, maybe guests, family that have come. All of you who should be coming every week but aren't here, we're glad you're here too. <laughs> Seriously, it's a wonderful morning to celebrate the risen Christ. You know, from 1992 to 1960, or 1952, I should say, to 1969, Art Linkletter's House Party was a TV show that aired on CBS. The show is best remembered for a segment called Kids Say the Darndest Things. Does anybody remember that? All you just revealed your age. All right, the kids say the darndest things, right? Uh, it's a segment in which, uh, during that time, Linkletter, the host, would interview school children uh, from the ages of 5 to 10. Of course, lots of funny things came out, right? Kids say the darndest things. And we're a long way from the 50s and 60s this morning here at Mosaic, but even today, kids do have a way with thoughts and words, don't they? They have a way with thoughts and words. In fact, a little boy came home from a, uh, or, or I'm sorry, a little boy was sick one Palm Sunday, and he stayed home with his mother, and uh, his father went on behalf of the family, went to the Palm Sunday service, and, and there, of course, they received palm branches and waved them, uh, you know, in, in celebration of Jesus. When the dad came home, uh, he had this palm branch, and so the little boy said to him, Hey, Daddy, you know, what's the palm branch? Where'd you get the palm branch? He said, well, son, you know, Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, and when he did, all the people greeted him, and they waved palm branches, so we have the palm branch this, this morning, to which his son exclaimed, great, the only Sunday I miss, and Jesus shows up. <laughs> I, the only Sunday I miss, and Jesus shows up. He thought that, right? Five-year-old Brian was another guy, had a pivotal verse to recite in the annual Easter program. He is not here, he is risen. That was his line out of Luke chapter 24. But unfortunately, nerves got the best of him, and when it came time for Brian to, to share his line, he got a little nervous and he forgot. So the director quietly whispered in his ear these lines, he is not here, he is risen. Brian then confidently grabbed the microphone and triumphantly shouted, he is not here, he is in prison. <laughs> not here, in prison, Mike, he's in prison, right? And then, of course, a man and his five-year-old son were driving past the cemetery and noticed a large pile of dirt next to a freshly dubbed grave. When the little boy said, look, Dad, one got out. I'll just let that wash over you there for a second. One got out, right? Well, indeed, we're here this morning to consider and ultimately to celebrate the one indeed who got out. The one indeed who got out. And more than that, to consider what does that mean for us today. Before we do, however, let's acknowledge one undisputable fact. And that is this, that Jesus is a recognized figure of human history. He is a recognized figure of human history. He actually was born, he lived, he died. That is indisputable. In fact, Josephus, a first century scholar and historian, who at one time led Jewish armies against uh, Rome... Uh, eventually deserted and became a Roman citizen and, and, and served as a uh, historian for the Roman uh, governor Titus, but all that's uh, the Roman emperor Titus, I should say, but uh, in, in his writings, roughly 90 to 95 AD, uh, he wrote a definitive history of, Jeru uh, of the Israelites and particularly focused on the first century. And in his history, writing again in the late 90s, Here's what he had to say, and by the way, he mentions Jesus twice in his writings, John the Baptist once, and also James, who was the half-brother of Jesus. But here's a passage from Josephus where he specifically cites a reference to Jesus Christ. About this time there lived Jesus, a wise man, if indeed one ought to call him a man. For he was one who performed surprising deeds and was a teacher to such people as accept the truth gladly. He won over many. Uh, one over many Jews and many of the Greeks, he was the Christ. And when upon the accusation of the principal men among us, Pilate had condemned him to a cross. Those who had first come to love him did not cease. He appeared to them, spending a third day restored to life. For the prophets of God had foretold these things and a thousand other marvels about him. And the tribe of the Christians so called after him has still to this day not disappeared. Even to this day, some 1900 years later, the tribe of the Christians has not yet disappeared. The fact is, Jesus was a figure of human history. The question today then is not so much did he live or did he not live, but rather is he still alive today? 
Or as Jesus himself asked one of his followers, who do you say that I am? That's the question to consider this morning. Who do you say that I am? In fact, this follower to whom Christ posed this question was one of his closest, a man named Peter. And Peter wrote two letters in the New Testament, first and second Peter, which we have, of course, today in the Bible. And he was writing these in roughly 60 to 65 AD, some 25 to 30 years after Christ had died uh, and, and had been buried. And in writing to uh, these letters, he was primarily focused on Jewish believers, that is, ethnic Jews who had grown up in the Jewish tradition, uh, both in terms of ethnic and cultural heritage, as well as their faith, but who had later converted to this new faith, Christianity. And he's writing these letters again to them. And, and where we want to focus our, our attention this morning is on uh, chapter 1 of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And let's read those together. They're on the screen. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. These Jews had been exiled due to persecution in Jerusalem. They've scattered throughout the region, he writes to them. He says this, verse 2, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded, that is you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. I want you to notice particularly a couple of things in verse 3. Uh, here in verse 3, for instance, Peter states that the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has caused us to be born again. And the question is, when I look at this text, the first question I ask is, who is this us? Who is this us to, that God has caused to be born again? Well, of course, it is we who have put our faith in Jesus Christ. Not merely as man, but Son of God. It is we who have been sprinkled with his blood, and we'll talk about that in a moment, and we who have become new creations, revived by faith, having hope restored, having experienced and found unconditional love. It's been revealed to us through Christ. Now, when you think about this, to modern ears, the idea of being sprinkled with his blood, that sounds foreign. That sounds almost cultish and ritualistic. And, and it doesn't make sense. But to the readers of Peter, they would have understood. Because again, they were Jews. They had been raised Jew, Jewish faith, converted to Christianity. And in the Old Testament, three times the people of Israel are actually sprinkled with blood, blood of an animal. And that happened. And so they would have made the connection that today for us is metaphorical. Uh, but here's the three times in the Old Testament when people of Israel were sprinkled with blood. First, at the establishment of what's called God's covenant with his people. When Moses led them out of Egypt into the wilderness, there was a covenant that God initiated with those people. It, it's a contract, like a legal contract. And that contract, that covenant initiated with the people where, where he said, you will be my people and I will be your God. It was sealed, as it were, with the blood of an animal and the people were sprinkled with that blood as a sign of the covenant and the contract being sealed, much the way we might write our name and, and sign a contract today. So first it was to establish this covenant uh, with the people of Israel. Secondly, blood was sprinkled on Aaron and, and, uh, uh, and, and others that became priests, his sons, to serve uh, God as, as priests. So Aaron, who was a brother of Moses, and his sons became the first priests of God for the nation of Israel. And to seal that deal, they were sprinkled in blood as a sign of holiness. And finally, uh, not only in terms of establishing the covenant, the sprinkling of Aaron and his sons, but the third time that blood was sprinkled on people in the Old Testament, the Israelites, was at a purification ceremony. A leper who had been healed of leprosy was sprinkled with blood as a sign that he was cleansed from his leprosy. So these three times, the covenant of God, as it were, the ordination of Aaron and his sons as priests, and this leper as a sign of cleansing and healing, Three times in the Old Testament, people were sprinkled with blood. And the readers, again, of 1 Peter, or of Peter, would have understood what Peter was saying. We who now have faith in Jesus Christ uh, can apply this metaphorical imagery to our lives as well. First, it signifies that God 
has made a covenant with us through faith in Jesus Christ. His blood was shed that we might come to know him as not only a man who lived, but the Son of God. It's a contract that God formed with us through his life, his death, and ultimately his resurrection. Formed by God with us, we are now his and he is ours. He will never leave us, the Bible says, nor forsake us in this life or in the life to come. That is for us who believe by faith. And having believed by faith, we who believe have been ordained as priests to worship God, to serve God, and ultimately to serve others. And by the way, that's not just pastors or in the Catholic tradition, paid priests. It's every single believer who has received him by faith is ordained now through the sprinkling of the blood as Aaron and his sons were to, to worship God, to serve him, and ultimately to serve others, the people of God. And finally, not only the contract, of eternal life not only that we are his priests and his servants in this life but finally through the blood we are cleansed from all wrongdoing the blood signifies that we have been cleansed from all wrongdoing the Bible says all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God that is the mark that God as our Creator would otherwise expect for us each of us has sinned and we fall short of his glory and the Bible also says that without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. So in this way, the sprinkling of the blood is metaphorical for us. And we who receive Christ by faith have been sprinkled with his blood, a covenant and contract made for eternal life to become the priests, the worshipers, and the servants of a mighty God. And ultimately to signify that we have been cleansed from our sin through faith in Jesus Christ. Each one of these things then is ours by faith through the death and the resurrection of Christ, which we acknowledge and celebrate today on Easter. And one more thing it says in verse 3, that he has caused us to be born again. What does that mean? Well, Peter's idea is that of a person uh, who has put his or her faith in Jesus Christ as if we have been renewed, reborn, born, as it were, in, into this new kingdom. The old, it says in 2 Corinthians, passes away. Behold, everything becomes new. Thus, to paraphrase verse 3, we might read it this way. In his great mercy, God has caused us to become a new creation. That is, those of us who receive him by faith. As if we have been born anew, this time, though, into a living hope with the promise of eternal life. Now, through faith in Christ, we will not perish. Mortal death is not the end of everything, but rather only the beginning, because Jesus Christ has risen from the grave conquered sin on our behalf and paid the penalty of death that we otherwise deserve. Indeed, Christmas is the promise. Easter is the proof. He was born, he lived, he died, he rose. And someday we who have had faith revived will rise too. In 1901, Abraham Lincoln's casket was open because it was feared that his body was not there. Similarly, some 2,000 years ago, Christ's tomb was opened as well. Not, though, to prove he is still there, but rather to prove and to demonstrate that he is not. Who do you say that he is? Bienvenidos Iglesia Mosaico a esta celebración de la Pascua y la Resurrección en el 2008. That all just means Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. Amen. Raise your hand if you've ever lost something of value. Levanta la mano si alguna vez has perdido algo de valor. I have lost many things of value over the years. Yo he perdido muchas cosas de valor a través de los años. But recently, my son, who is four, lost something of great value. Recientemente, mi hijo que tiene cuatro años perdió algo de valor. He has this calculator that he calls his supercomputer calculator. Tiene esta calculadora que le dice mi supercalculadora. 
And after playing with it for a few days, he lost it. And for hours, he kept looking for it. Un día lo perdió esta calculadora y comenzó a buscar esta calculadora por todos lados. And he would say, where is my supercomputer calculator? Where is my supercomputer calculator? Uh, and decía yo, no sé dónde está mi supercalculadora. ¿Dónde está mi supercalculadora? Well, the whole time, daddy had his supercomputer calculator. <laughs> yo tenía su calculadora. See, sometimes we... Look for hope in the wrong places. A veces buscamos por la esperanza en sitios donde no están. All the while forgetting that our Father has our hope in His hands. Sin recordar que nuestro Padre tiene la esperanza en sus manos. That verse said, He has given us new birth into a living hope. Ese versículo dice, Nos ha dado un nacimiento nuevo en de una esperanza. And we're going to call this a restored hope. Everybody say restored hope. Now we're going to say it in Spanish, Esperanza Restaurada. Esperanza Restaurada, that's right. Well done. Sometimes we look for hope in the wrong places. Buscamos por esa esperanza en sitios donde no lo vamos a encontrar. Sometimes we look for hope in a new diet. A veces buscamos la esperanza en una dieta nueva. Or we look for hope in relationships. Buscamos la esperanza en relaciones o por otras personas. Sometimes we look for hope in Loyola, Chicago. A veces buscamos por esperanza en Loyola. I don't care really about basketball. That was just for, that was just for you Americans. No me importa, en realidad no me importa. Eso era para los gringos. But the Bible says that there's only one place where you can find hope. La Biblia dice que solo hay un lugar donde puedes buscar la, la esperanza. And it's the moment of the resurrection. Es el momento de la resurrección. Because you see that, as Pastor Mark just taught us, como nos dijo el Pastor Mark, the resurrection, it's not a myth or a story. La resurrección no era un mito o una historia. The resurrection was an event that did happen. La resurrección de Cristo fue un evento que sí sucedió. And not just an event, no solo un evento, it was also an extraordinary circumstance. También fue una circunstancia extraordinaria, because the resurrection of Jesus broke the laws of nature. Porque la resurrección de Jesús rompió las leyes de la naturaleza. And he did all that, he conquered death, él hizo todo esto, y venció la muerte, so that you and I could have forgiveness. Para que tú y yo tuviéramos perdón, and we could have eternal life, amen? And so we can live as people who have a new hope. Podemos vivir como personas que tienen una nueva esperanza. Knowing that it comes from the death and resurrection of Jesus. Sabiendo que viene de la muerte y resurrección de Jesús. Knowing that we cannot earn it by ourselves. Sabiendo que no podemos ganarla por nosotros mismos. And so how do you live with this living hope? ¿Cómo podemos vivir con esta esperanza? I'm going to explain it this way. Lo voy a explicar de la siguiente manera. Raise your hand if there's anybody pregnant in this church right now. Raise your hand. Levanta la mano si alguien está embarazada. My friend Brooke. All right. Congratulations, Brooke. Now, raise your hand if you're pregnant and your husband doesn't know yet. This is the moment. Si tu esposo todavía no sabe que estás embarazada, este es el momento. My wife and I uh, took 10 years before we had our first child. Mi esposa y yo tuvimos que esperar 10 años antes de tener nuestro primer hijo. And when we finally found out that she was pregnant, finalmente cuando nos dimos cuenta que ella estaba embarazada, we had to wait the, the 12 weeks that doctors tell you to wait before you tell anybody. Tuvimos que esperar 12 semanas antes de decirle a otras personas. Now, during those 12 weeks, perhaps we weren't pronouncing the words. Quizás durante esas 12 semanas no estábamos pronunciando las palabras, but our smiles were showing that there was something we were hiding. Pero nuestras sonrisas mostraban que estábamos escondiendo algo. We would look at each other with eyes of love and reproduction. Nos mirábamos con estos ojos de amor y reproducción. She's getting very embarrassed right now, by the way. La estoy haciendo pasar una pena. And you know what happened after the 12 weeks? We started to pronounce the words. Comenzamos después de 12 semanas a pronunciar las palabras and to announce that there was a child coming, y anunciar que venía un bebé. And then, after nine months, luego de nueve meses, the words became a reality that we could finally see. 
Las palabras se hicieron una realidad que pudimos finalmente ver. In the same way, when we are people of restored hope, de la misma manera cuando somos gente con esperanza restaurada, we can walk around as if we're pregnant with joy. Podemos caminar como si estuviéramos embarazados con gozo. In fact, you, can, you are so pregnant with joy when you are a Christ follower. Tienes tanto gozo en tu embarazo si eres un cristiano that you can even have cravings. Que puedes tener antojos for whatever you want, para cualquier cosa que quieras. Because of this joy that your life is going to start to shine. Por este gozo que tu vida va a comenzar a brillar. You and I can be bearers of this hope. Tú y yo podemos ser personas que llevan esta esperanza, a hope that people will be able to see by our lives and the way that we live and speak. Una esperanza que la gente puede ver de la manera que, que hablamos y que vivimos and that we will be able to pronounce unto them que vamos a poder pronunciar las palabras de esa esperanza and it can become a reality in people's lives. Y puede hacerse una realidad en la vida de las personas. Your hope can be restored when you follow Jesus. Tu esperanza puede ser restaurada cuando sigues a Jesús. And when you are in that kind of living hope, y cuando tienes esa esperanza viva, that living hope can break through any kind of brokenness. Esa esperanza puede romper, quebrantar cualquier tipo de dolor. And some of you may be struggling right now with the idea. Algunos de ustedes están luchando con esa idea because you're thinking, I, I don't know whether I should live in that hope or not. No sé si deba vivir en esa esperanza o no because hard times come, because times become difficult in my life often, because, uh, because life is just so hard at times. Quizás lo estás pensando porque la vida es difícil y dura en varios momentos. But I want to let you know that when you're in living hope, your father embraces you no matter what. Cuando estás en la esperanza viva, tu padre te lleva en sus brazos sin importar. I will explain it like this to finish. Lo voy a explicar de la siguiente manera. A few years ago, uh, my little nephew came to visit us where we used to live. Hace varios años, mi sobrino vino a visitarnos donde estábamos viviendo antes. And one evening, I took him to the park right at sunset. Una tarde lo llevé al parque justo cuando estaba poniéndose el sol. And when we were in the park, we heard a loud barking. Cuando estábamos en ese parque, sentimos un ladrido alto. Y cu cuando recibimos ese ladrido, mi ni el niño me vio. When we heard that barking, my nephew looked at me, and there was fear in his eyes. Había temor en sus ojos. But I told him, I will hold you, I will embrace you, and nothing will happen to you. I will take you home. Y yo le dije, te voy a alzar y te voy a llevar a la casa, y nada te va a pasar. And sure enough, I picked him up. And we started walking towards our house, and this huge creature came barking and attacking us. Comenzamos a caminar de regreso a nuestra casa, y esta criatura inmensa comenzó a atacarnos y a ladrar. It, it really was a chihuahua, but it was still very frightening. <laughs> For me, anyways, este, era, un, era un chihuahuita, y me estaba dando mucho miedo, de todas formas. And eventually we made it home. Eventualmente llegamos a la casa. And my nephew told the story of his amazing uncle. Y mi sobrino echó la historia de su tío increíble. His uncle who saved him from that menace and took him in his arms and carried him all the way home. Su tío que lo salvó de esa amenaza y lo llevó de regreso a casa. The whole time he was not scared. Todo el tiempo que lo alcé no tenía ningún tipo de miedo because he knew that I was protecting him. Porque él sabía que lo estaba protegiendo. He knew that the whole time I was going to hold him in my arms. Él sabía que todo el tiempo lo iba a tener en mis brazos. Church, when you are living hope, you live knowing that Jesus is embracing you at all times. Cuando estamos en esta esperanza viva, sabemos que Jesucristo nos lleva en sus brazos todo el tiempo. We know that this living hope is restoring something in our lives. Sabemos que esta esperanza restaura, restaura algo en nuestras vidas. And we know that this living hope will bring breakthrough because of the resurrection. Sabemos que esta esperanza va a traer victoria por la resurrección. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Porque él es el camino, la verdad y la vida. And nobody can reach the Father except through Him. Nadie puede alcanzar al Padre sin Él. Amen. Thank you. Awesome.
I have no idea how he does that. <laughs> I was so intimidated following uh, Alex, knowing I couldn't translate myself, so I overcompensated by wearing a tie, hoping that would distract you all. <laughs> I had some lady in between the services going, but you speak Chinese, don't you? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Just like, but I got this nice tie on, hopefully you see that. But, uh, anyway. <laughs> and, um, and I can't believe he brought up that idea about being pregnant. Nobody knows. Is Melanie in the audience this morning? Because we've got <laughs> some amazing and powerfully shocking news. We're pregnant. April Fools. Ha, 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 I've been waiting. I've been waiting like years for a Sunday to fall on April Fools. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll have to apologize to Melanie in just a moment. You guys don't tell her I did that. <laughs> anyway, before we get too distracted, we're so glad you guys are here. And I hope that what you're seeing today will give you a taste of who we are as a church because we want to be a church for all people. We want Christ to be manifested in the myriads of personalities that define the body of Christ and in the myriads of expressions of his children. And so what you're seeing this morning between the worship, the worship styles, the teaching, the teaching styles, who's standing before you is a flavor of hopefully what you see every week, but just in a very concentrated form. So we're very, very happy that you guys are here this morning and that we could present to you the gospel through these different perspectives. Amen? Well, I love what we've heard so far. And if we could go back to verse 3 of 1 Peter, because in the course of understanding the fact that we've got this faith and this hope, I want us to look at the fact that we've got this incredible love revealed through Christ. Notice what it says, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And so notice how Alex said that everybody's looking for hope. Well, the basis for the reason that everybody's looking for that hope is this great mercy, this search for this perfect, unconditional love. That's what everybody's looking for, and you see it all the time. People are chasing this their entire lives, looking for this unconditional, perfect love. And so many times, they fall in love with the idea of being in love. They fall in love with the fleeting highs associated with crushes and the emotions of love. But a lot of times, they don't find it, and the reason why is because there's only one source for it. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. See, I was driven by this as a 21-year-old. Sophomore at the University of Tennessee, I hated my social life because I was so painfully shy. I was not only geeky, but I was also really shy, and I could not talk to girls. I just remember so many conversations just trying to get their names where I would hear my voice go, I'm Harry, what's your name? I'm not, I mean, yeah, you think I'm kidding, but I am not exaggerating. That is how painfully shy I was back in those days, and that's why I never got dates, right? That's why I, was, that's why I hated my social life, but actually it's one of the reasons why God kept me out of so much trouble until I was 21, you know, because I just didn't know how to form a relationship. I didn't have that within me. And then one day, I heard about this one we're celebrating today. Pastor was telling me about this Jesus and what he offered and this new life and this unconditional love. And I was like, man, if this is who this Jesus is, this is what I want. And I remember getting on my knees and giving him every aspect of my life and getting up from there with new hope that maybe, just maybe, God could show me this incredible love that I'd been searching for but could never find. 
And that was the beginning of a long, long journey that would take me many years to under, still learning it to this day. But one thing I know for sure is this, that Christ is the only source of this pure, true, unconditional love. He's the only source. He reveals to us how much he has loved us so that we can in turn reveal and show it to others. It is through this revelation that love flourishes from within. You see, so many of us, we understand conditional love, not unconditional love, right? We're raised in homes where love is given if you meet certain requirements and make certain performance expectations. And it, the best picture is, you know, like the donkey that's drawn forward by the dangling carrot in front of him, and he never reaches it, but he never stops trying. That's us, and that's what conditional love does to us. It causes us to be performance-based, never ceasing, looking, but never achieving or obtaining. But Christ's love is unconditional. It has nothing to do with your ability to meet any performance goals or expectations. It has nothing to do with the way you look or how much money is in your bank account or where you live or the kind of car you drive or the number of degrees you have or where you were raised or who your daddy is or who you voted for. It has everything to do instead with who he is and who his daddy is, right? It has everything to do with the fact that he was willing to love you first regardless of your response in return to his sacrifice. It has everything to do with his work on the cross that no matter what you did could never nullify its power. See, that's perfect love. It's a redeeming love. It's a patient love. It'll wait 21 years for you. It's a love without condition. It's a healing love. It's a restoring love, one that unifies and gives hope, meaning, and purpose. It's a joyful love, a consistent love, one that never ends. It never fails. It's a sacrificial love. It's the kind of love that will chase you down no matter where you are. It can overcome any debilitating issues of your past and turn that pain into a total redemption story that just reeks out how much God loves you and how much he loves the world. This is our Christ. This is our Jesus. This is who we celebrate today. Quite honestly, this is what you've been looking for. It's what everybody's looking for. And that's what I was looking for some 37 years ago. It's what Mark DeMoz was looking for. It's what Alex Diaz was looking for. He found it in Venezuela. Alberto Acasio found it in Mexico. Shiny found it in India. So many people have found it wherever they are in whatever circumstances they've been. This room is full of people who have found this unconditional love in the most unique and unusual circumstances. There are people born in poverty, people born in affluence, there are people that are highly educated, some that live in a tent behind the church. They are all people because the gospel is for all people. Christ is for all people. This church is for all people, and that's the reason we've worked so hard to make sure that our witness screams out to all people that Christ is able to overcome any of these issues that tend to divide and separate us. And so this morning, as you contemplate your own life, as you wonder about your own ability to love, I can tell you one thing. Christ is the source for you to not only understand love, but to give it as well. Because I thought I knew how to love when I was 21, and I didn't know squat. When I got married to my wife, I thought I knew how to love her, and he showed me a whole new level of selfishness. When I held my baby girl in my arms, 
on, at 5.40 in the morning on March 31st, 1993, I thought I knew how to love that little girl. She just turned 25 yesterday. I knew nothing about how to love her. When I moved here in 2002, I thought I knew how to love all people. I didn't know squat about loving all people. It took a good five to seven years of breaking through my selfishness for him to reveal that kind of love to me. It's a journey. We're all on it. The question is, are you willing to step into it? And so if Jesus is who he says he is, and he is, our challenge to you this morning is to become desperate enough to ask him to take your life. Gracias, Alex. Thank you, Alberto. Cuando sea grande, quiero ser como tú. <laughs> he wants to be like me when he grows up, but no. I want to be like him when I grow up. He is a servant of God. Hace rato me bajé a compartir en esa parte del piso. On the first service, I started preaching from the floor. Y me dijeron que no lo vuelva a hacer. And they told me to not do it again. Porque solamente nos pueden ver las dos líneas de enfrente. Because we're only visible to the first two rows. We're so short. Y los de allá atrás no saben quién está predicando. People in the back don't even know who's preaching. Así es de que yo creo que hoy nos vamos a subir acá. So today we're going to preach from here. Así ya no tenemos duda en que nos puedan ver. So everybody can actually see us. Déjeme decirle algo esta mañana. Let me tell you something this morning. Y quiero que lo repita conmigo. I want you to repeat this with me. Fe, faith, esperanza, hope, amor, love. Salude al que está a su lado y dígale fe, esperanza y amor. Tell the person next to you faith, hope and love. Fe, esperanza y amor. Fe, esperanza y amor. Ah. Amén. Eso es lo que tenemos nosotros como creyentes. That's what we have as believers. Son las puertas de nuestra vida. It's the doors into our new life. Algunas veces están cerradas. Sometimes the doors into our life are closed. Pero quiero decirte algo esta mañana. But I want to tell you something this morning. Porque Dios nos está revelando. Because God is revealing to us. A través del Pastor Mark. Through Pastor Mark. Pastor Alex. Alex. Pastor Harry. Pastor Harry. La llave para abrir esas puertas. The key to opening the doors to your life. Y esa llave quiero decirte esta mañana. And that key I want to tell you this morning. Es la resurrección de Jesucristo. It's the resurrection of Jesus. Esa es la llave. That is the key. Ahí está el poder. There's where the power is. En la resurrección. In the resurrection. Cristo vive. Jesus lives. Cristo vive. Jesus lives. Él está vivo. He's alive. Y si no estás conociendo ese poder, and if you're not getting to know that power, esta mañana estamos aquí. This morning we are here. Porque la resurrección es algo más que una historia. Because the resurrection is more than a story. La resurrección es un acto. The resurrection is an event. La resurrección es algo real. The resurrection is something real. La resurrección es algo que viene a tu vida. The resurrection is something that can come to your life. Esta mañana Esta mañana es tuya. This morning is yours. Esta mañana es tuyo. This morning is for you. El poder de la resurrección. The power of the resurrection. Recibe del poder Receive de la resurrección. The power of the resurrection. Recibe el poder Receive de la resurrección. The power of the y te quiero decir algo. I want to tell you something. Que ese poder de la resurrección. That power of the resurrection. No solamente es para llenar tu corazón. It's not just to fill your heart. Si el poder, el poder de la resurrección. But the power of the resurrection. Es para que tú toques a alguien. It's so that you can touch somebody else. Y le compartas. And you can share with them. Fe. Faith. Esperanza. Hope. Y amor. And love. Ese es el poder de la resurrección para nosotros. That is nosotros. the power of the resurrection for us. 
Lo que Dios quiere hacer esta mañana en tu corazón. What God wants to do this morning in your heart. Él quiere reavivar tu fe. He wants to revive your faith. A mí me impacta la escritura. The scriptures really impact me. Que Cristo le está predicando a sus discípulos. Where it says that Jesus is preaching to his disciples. Y les dice que va a resucitar. And he tells them that he will come back to life. Y les explica varias veces que va a resucitar. And he tells them several times that we, he will come back to life. Al tercer día resucita. And then on the third day he comes back to Las life. Las mujeres van a la tumba. The women go into the tomb. Y regresan a decirle a los discípulos. And they come back to tell the disciples. Él no está ahí. He's no longer there. Él ha resucitado. He rose back to life. Pero las mujeres, los hombres le dijeron a las mujeres. But then the men told those women. No creemos. We don't believe that. Y eso es lo que viene a hacer Dios esta mañana. And that's what God is doing this morning. ¿Cómo está tu fe? How is your faith today? Está ahogada por los espinos. Is it drowning in the thorns? Está ahogada por las cosas de este mundo. Is it dying surrounded by the things of this world? Te has conformado con la fe religiosa. Are you conforming yourself with just religious activity? O necesitas ser avivado en tu fe. Or do you need to be revived in your faith? Ya compartió el pastor Alex. Just like Alex said. Más de 500 vieron al Cristo resucitado. More than 500 saw Jesus after he came back to life. Yo puedo testificarte que si estoy aquí esta mañana, I can testify myself that if I am here this morning, solamente es por una razón. It's only for one Porque reason. Cristo resucitó. Because Jesus came back to life. Porque él vive. Because he's alive. Cristo vive. Jesus is alive. Cristo vive. Jesus is alive. Cristo vive. Jesus is alive. Sabes que cuando las mujeres llegaron a la tumba, do you know that when the women came to, got to the tomb, they were thinking, ¿Quién moverá la piedra? Who's going to move that huge stone? Es muy grande y muy pesada. It's too big and too heavy. Y llegaron a la tumba. And they got to the grave. Cuando ellas llegaron, and when they arrived there, la piedra estaba movida. The stone had already been removed. Entraron rápido a la tumba. They entered into the tomb. Y vieron la tumba vacía. And they saw an empty tomb. No sé cómo está tu esperanza esta mañana. I don't know how your hope is like today. Tal vez ha habido una piedra grande sobre los sueños que has tenido. Perhaps you felt a huge stone over the dreams that you've had for yourself. Wow. Tal vez la, la relación en tu familia per está vacía. Perhaps the relationships within your own family are empty. Hay muchas cosas que ya quedaron muertas en tu vida. There are many things that feel like they've died in your life. Pero en esta mañana, but this morning, te estamos hablando. We are speaking del poder de la resurrección. Of the power of the resurrection. De la llave de la resurrección. Of the key of the resurrection. Para abrir, to open, para traer, to open, esperanza, with hope, esperanza, with hope. Eso es lo que Dios está haciendo en tu vida. This is what God is doing in your life. Una nueva esperanza. A brand new hope. Una nueva esperanza. A brand new hope. En el poder de Dios. In the power of God. No pienses en la roca. Don't think of the stone. No pienses en la tumba vacía. Don't think of the empty tomb. Siente. Feel. Experimenta. Experiment with. El poder de la resurrección. Experience the power of the resurrection. Es real. Y esto con esto termino también. Yo no sé cómo estamos haciendo los predicadores esta mañana. I don't know how we're doing this, us preachers this morning. Todos estamos acostumbrados a predicar. We're all used to preaching. 45 minutos a lo menos. 45 minutes at least. Hoy lo hemos hecho 45 minutos entre cuatro. In between four today we've done 45 minutes. Pero esto es lo que Dios está revelando en nuestras vidas. This is what God is revealing in our lives today. Su amor, his love, su amor, his love. ¿Sabes que hoy podemos amarnos? You know that we can love each other today? Venezolanos y mexicanos. Venezuelans and Mexicans. Porque ese es el amor de Dios. Because that is the love of God. Yo sé que algunos esta mañana. I know that there are some people here this morning. No pueden ni amar a su esposa. You don't even have enough love to love your wife with. Hijos no pueden ni amar a sus padres. 
There are some children here who don't even have enough love to love their parents with. Parientes no pueden amar a otros parientes. Relatives that do not love one another. Porque han sido lastimados. Because they've been hurt. Y su corazón está dolido. And their hearts are broken. Y podemos hablar de amor. And we can talk about love. Pero no lo estamos experimentando. But we may not be experiencing love. Déjame te digo en esta mañana. Let me tell you this morning. Que la llave. That the key. Para soltar el amor. To let go of this Para love. Para manifestar el amor. To show love. Es el poder de la resurrección. The power of the resurrection. Es el Cristo resucitado. It's Jesus who is alive. Es la resurrección de Cristo. The resurrection of Recibe. Jesus. Recibe. Recibe. De ese poder. Receive this power. Recibe. Receive. De esa presencia. Of this presence. Déjame hacer algo que que no me dijo el pastor Mark ni Harry ni Alex que hiciera. I'm gonna do something right now that neither one of the pastors told me to do. Y que ni yo nunca lo he hecho. That I've never done. Y que ni yo nunca he visto a, a alguien. That I've never seen anybody else do. Y nunca he escuchado esa teología. I've never heard of this theology. Pero Dios me lo ministró a mi corazón esta mañana. But God ministered this to my heart this morning. Quiero invitar a los pastores, ancianos de la iglesia que se pongan de pie ahí en su lugar. I want to ask the pastors and elders of this church please stand up and stay standing where you are the pastors and elders of this church your, your spouses as well we need all of you both men and women si hay alguien que esta mañana no ha, no ha abierto su corazón a Jesucristo. If there is somebody this morning who has not opened their hearts to Jesus. Si hay alguien esta mañana que siente que ha perdido su fe. If there is somebody this morning who's felt that they've lost their faith. Si hay alguien esta mañana que siente que ha perdido su esperanza. If there is somebody this morning who feels that they've lost their hope. Si hay alguien esta mañana que necesita que su amor sea restaurado. If there is somebody this morning who feels that their love needs to be restored. Mis hermanos pastores, diáconos, ancianos, my brothers, the pastors, the deacons, the elders, tienen algo para usted. They have something for you. Escúchame. Listen to me. El abrazo, the embrace, de la resurrección. Of the resurrection. La llave de la resurrección. The key of the resurrection. Usted quiere recibir you want to receive it. este abrazo de la resurrección. And you want to receive it through this embrace, this hug of the resurrection. Hoy voy a invitar a la iglesia I'm going to ask this church que se ponga de pie. To please stand up, everybody. Y les quiero invitar que vengan aquí. I want to ask you to step forward. Pase aquí al frente. Come up front, right here. Y permítanos como pastores, and allow us as pastors, como ancianos, as elders, darles un toque, to be able to give you a touch, un abrazo, of an embrace, poner nuestra mano sobre su hombro, to allow us to put our hands over your shoulders or over your head, y que usted reciba, so that you may receive, ese poder de la resurrección, this power of the resurrection. Quiere venir al frente, venga. Would you please Pasen. join us up front? Come Haganos up front. favor de pasar. Join us. Pasen. Join us up front. The Ven. leaders join us Vamos up front as well. Vamos a orar esta mañana. Hay algo nuevo en este lugar. There is something brand new this morning. Hay algo nuevo en esta iglesia. There is something brand new this morning. Un nuevo poder se está moviendo. There is a power that is moving. Venga usted, salga de su lugar. You can leave the place Hoy where you're standing right now. You're going to leave no differently. No por el poder here. de un hombre. Not by the power of a man. Sino por el poder de la resurrección. But by the power of the resurrection. Hoy su fe. Today your faith. Su esperanza. Your hope. Su amor. Your love. Serán restaurados. Will be restored. Solamente venga. All you have to do Hoy is step decida. forward. You can decide today. Tomar un compromiso con Dios. To begin a commitment with God. Venga. Please step forward. Pastores, abracen. Pastors, please Ancianos, embrace. Abracen. Embrace the Token. people in front of you. Embrace the people. No se quede viendo. Nos venga. Es un día especial. 
it's es el día de la resurrección venga venga deje, deje que Dios haga una obra en esta mañana que el poder de Dios se manifieste que la presencia de Dios se manifieste esto es algo nuevo que está saliendo la tumba está vacía la doctrina está vacía Doctrine may even be empty. Es la presencia de Dios. It's the presence of es God. el poder de Dios. It's the power of God. Es la resurrección. It's the resurrection. La llave. The key para tu vida. For your life. Solamente. Only. Ven y recibe. Come and receive this. En esta mañana. This morning. No te quedes ahí. Don't stay Hay there. Hay suficiente hermanos. There's enough people para up here to en esta touch mañana. you this morning. Para que tú salgas. So that you can leave here. Con una nueva unción. With this anointing. Con un nuevo poder. With a new power. Con una nueva presencia. With a new presence. Con una nueva fe. With a new faith. Una nueva esperanza. With a new hope. Un nuevo amor. With a new love de la resurrección of the resurrection let's worship together are you hurting the broken within overwhelmed by the weight of your sin is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus, Jesus is calling Oh come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was born with The precious blood of Jesus Your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and train them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was born with the precious blood oh what a savior isn't he wonderful sing hallelujah Christ Yeah. 
Just voices, just voices. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was born with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As you wait for the crown, tell the world of the treasure you've found. 